Hey, Alan, I have a interesting question for you that I wanted to get your opinion on. Uh, basically, I'm trying to figure out why people take their jobs so seriously when they work for another company. Uh, I'm not speaking specifically of somebody who owns their own business and maybe they're they're doing something that's really their their passion. Their this is what they really love to do. I'm I'm more talking specifically on um, people in a corporate environment, people that are doing their uh, job working for another company, and I'm also talking about non life threatening situations. Basically, uh, you know, somebody's life is is not in danger if you know they don't perform a specific duty or come in on during off hours or something of that nature so you know I something that I really wanted to run past you and get your opinion on I'm not exactly sure how you feel on it but uh, I, I to me I think people take their jobs a little bit too seriously in in a, in a corporate environment w what do you think about that man the, the the startups there's a lot to unpack there like <laughs> o obviously there's a lot of constraints <laughs> on the on the sentiment but I understand where you're coming from sure I I for once think uh, that people the par the paradigm of how important jobs are in everyone's lives uh, has shifted quite a bit in the past few years and correct me if I'm wrong but the notion from your gener generation and maybe a generation prior one or two, is that your value, not only as an individual but a professional, is directly tied to the profession that you chose to perform. And thus, you could think that there's still some remnants of people directly tying their value to their job. Thus, people take their job too seriously because they take it as in their value is directly tied to the performance that they put on their job, though they take it that seriously. That's maybe one way to see it. Sure. Do you think that they have maybe, uh, you know, I, I was thinking probably in my younger years when I was working, I, I, I took my job, uh, you know, maybe too seriously. I, I, I could probably put myself into the category that I, 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 I quote unquote laugh at or, or think it's comical now. Uh, back in you know years ago when I was younger and and uh, that might have been because I had maybe had more aspirations to become um, you know higher level and, and 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 obviously you want to make more money you know maybe uh, get into management and and you know keep growing up the chain but uh, you know I think as as time has moved on my thought process has probably shift shifted in that in that realm you know well your value what you value at your point in time, not only in maturity professionally, but individually, chief as time goes on. And obviously you put a much more weight on maybe your personal touch, your individuality as a, a person that not only works, also has other interests and activities that doesn't revolve around work. And I think that are itself, that's why maybe when you face yourself with someone that either still thinks or their core values are tie directly tied to their work. Like the people that go on vacation and even on vacation still call you uh, out of nowhere to deal with a problem, <laughs> even though they're on vacation. <clears throat> sure, sure. Uh, and people that are uh, younger that are getting out of college and want to prove their word, you know, that, are, that have the hunger to be able to, to push through. <clears throat> I guess the emotional maturity or professional intelligence, who you call it? You know that the people call it uh, emotional intelligence uh, yep. to be able to deal with problems that are well, not directly related to something very integrated or you know in certain information. I guess the thing could be say like a professional intelligence that some people are able to deal with their work but also do it in a way that is amenable for themselves and those around them. Um, I guess you could say that there are people that are lacking that professional intelligence. Uh, you know, I, I would also assume that it probably how much they enjoy doing what they're doing would, would play a part in it as well. You know, some people really, really enjoy the work that they do. Uh, so so to them, it's almost, you know, they want to put in the much uh, as much effort into their job as they might into a hobby that they really enjoy to do. So I, I would assume that that plays a, a part as well. Um, I just think I, I, I you know, I just kind of always find it odd when when people dedicate it almost seems like they dedicate their entire lives to uh, a job, especially when it's a 
working for another company. And, and, and let's be honest here, uh, nine times out of 10, these companies don't actually care about the person themselves. They just care about the bottom line. Uh, so, you know, they can, they can get rid of anybody at any time. Um, so why would you want to dedicate your entire life basically to, you know, something that's, I don't want to necessarily say unstable, but for all intents and purposes is potentially unstable. I mean, it's the, <laughs> the payroll is the first that suffers when a company is facing economical issues and they're looking to make cuts. Usually they start by laying off people and to make yep. it, I guess, relevant to the times that we're living through, like the most recent ones being uh, Facebook and Twitter, like laying Twitter, a whole bunch yeah. of people and the market getting flooded by uh, developers, engineers and other areas. Yeah. Uh, there's certainly a, a disparity on how companies treat their employees and how employees treat their companies. It's always taught when you get out of school that you go to school, you go to college, you graduate, you get a job, you get a house, you do, you know, the, the typical model for, for going about things because it, right. it, it, it's be, it has proven successful to th some extent for yeah, the majority yeah. of people, but also it's what has been established as the norm because that's what the, I guess, the companies need you to believe in. Well, that's what you're supposed to do, quote unquote, right? Yeah. And when your livelihood is directly tied to the whims of a company, whether they're going to preserve you or not, you're only as valuable as the amount of uh, work that you do or the hours that you invest in. And there's a whole conversation in related to um, people uh, earnings plus the, the amount of time that they work. For example, uh, man, I've seen this example so many times and I, I forget. Uh, I, I wish I could give credit where it's due. Uh, obviously, this is not something that I came up with, but it's something that I've seen. Uh, it's how someone is explaining economics and the value of work. Like say that you got someone making a logo for you, like a design, and they say, oh, um, I'm going to charge you $18,000 for, for that logo. You say, okay, how much time does that take? And you say, okay, so it's going to take me three months to, to get the logo done. So the argument back and forth usually is, okay, if you're paying me flat rate, then I'll say, oh, well, I'll take six months to, to do the logo then why are you taking so long? Well, it, it takes a lot of uh, creativity, effort, time investment, all the things that add like the fluff to it. And oh no, then I'm going to pay you by hour and instead of paying you like a, a sum. So the amount of time that you invest is the amount of remuneration that you're going to take for, for that. So, oh, then, then again, then I'll take as much time as I need to <laughs> instead sure. of finishing in less time. Oh, but why would you, you do it in less time? Okay, well, if I do it in less time, I'm going to charge you 25000 for the logo and I can do it in, in 10 minutes. Then, <laughs> then wait, but that doesn't make sense. Uh, you can do it in less. Well, I have the skills, the experience and all the other things that are brought to the table for me to be able to charge you that amount of money because go and find someone that makes the logo for you, obviously being the hypothetical case here, uh, in the amount of time that I do it, as good as I do it. If you pay me, then then what's more important for you? Your t the time the, that you pay the person or, or the amount of money? And most people choose the, the amount of time because obviously everything's... Um, well, yeah, time is money, right? Time, that's, uh, time, that's the old adage. Time is money. Right. I, I you, you you really br broke it down uh, when I said that you had a lot to unpack at the beginning. There was a lot there because obviously you you make the clear distinction between uh, people taking their job too serious, uh, but not being on jobs that quote unquote are critical, life threatening. But how, yeah, and, how how much can you trickle down that uh, statement as far as any job do, does? Like obviously not talking about uh, an emergency room situation, but someone that is changing your, your tires or your brakes. So like, obviously you want their, them to take your job seriously. Yeah, no, no doubt. Yeah. There's definitely certain jobs, you know, I mean, and, and I, I you know, obviously as you know, and, and probably uh, most of our listener, listeners know, um, you know, I, I'm coming at it from an IT perspective and uh, you know, your uh, uh, background is in IT as well. So uh, it's basically the same, the same kind of perspective. And, you know, from, from our perspective, 
typically what we do is not impacting anybody's life as far as a life threatening situation. It'll it, it does impact people's lives. Yes, it does uh, allow them to get work done or stop them from doing work uh, for, for, for a lot of different situations. Uh, well, I mean, especially the, the type of IT work that we do, which is more on the infrastructure realm and not, not on the uh, coding and application end, um, it's not going to, somebody's not going to live or die whether, you know, this server is up or down. You know what I mean? Um, so that, how, uh, how can I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm dealing with a bit of a cold uh, at the moment. Let's let's put it that way. I I I understand. I've been <laughs> I work on the yeah. same field as you, but yeah. Say that someone didn't take their job seriously or wasn't paying attention, or I guess you gotta make the the clear distinction between mistakes and not taking your job seriously. And before yeah, we it, uh, before we proceed, and, and, what, and, and, what, what, and, let let me throw the question back to okay. you for a second. What is for you someone taking their job too serious? Yeah, see, and that's where I was going to go down to because maybe I worded it in a little bit different. Maybe it was just my uh, cynical uh, cynicism that was, you know, taking over as far as, you know, taking their job seriously versus not taking it seriously. I think it's more, uh, maybe it's more of a basically living for your job versus, um, you know, working to live kind of situation where people do nothing but work and and their their primary concern is their job and that's that's where i think it's they they take their job too seriously they care so much about their job for another company to the point of you know basically living for that company living for that job when in all reality the company doesn't care about anything other than a profit so that's where that's i think that's the distinction in my head anyways where I, i'm going to say that you know they're going to take the job too seriously i'm not saying that that when you're working you're not taking your job seriously or or when i work i'm not taking my job seriously or i'm not trying to do things right it's just the fact that i'm not going to dedicate my entire life to that you know company to that job um there's more to life in my opinion than just working You know, I, I think I kind of know where you're going with it as far as, let's say, someone needed access to, you know, a medical service and because somebody's quote unquote not taking their job seriously, that service is down and it could be a you know, detriment to them getting the help that they need. I'm not, if, I don't know, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that kind of where you're uh, I was, thinking? I, I was going to say, I was going to uh, say a very... Uh, real example of something that happened while I was working in a, one of my, uh, one company. Okay. Um, one of the well, the production server, the main hard drive was erased while it was on production. Now, can you tell us what kind of company it was? What did the company do <clears throat> without yep. saying the name? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a company that is uh, specialized in uh, over the product counter and pharmaceuticals and did the logistic of warehousing the products and you will make the order uh, either the hospital or pharmacies and will go and deliver those products okay say that someone erased the the hard drive of the main production server and again this was a mistake right but the company was down for 36 hours thus the medicine that needed to be distributed didn't get to the patients that needed to receive it They also had like a division there for operation table equipment that was prepared on demand. Thus, mm -hmm. there was any operation. They weren't able to receive those instruments, either delaying the operation or someone that might have been in a critical state. And a lot of other things that happened because the system was down. So in a way, our I'm going more on the line that, yeah, our job, depending on what, what we influence, we touch, and we uh, are dealing with, It can be critical, you know, uh, and even life threatening to some extent. Sure, you know, that, that makes that's a great example. It makes perfect sense. But but that was on the on the point making the point for the impact of the job that we do versus uh, someone not taking it seriously because that example that I brought up it was a mistake. Uh, right. It being the case, I, I dealt with people that definitely are not lenient to the empathy of not only the happenings of a person during their work hours, mm -hmm. the personal life, obviously you don't 
necessarily bring your personal life to, to work, but you, how much can you really dissociate your persona, your individual from your professional self if if rough? So you're bringing not only the tools and the spirit professional that you bring to the table, but the, the spice of what makes you you, you bring it to the table as well. And that's how you interact not only with your peers, but your, your managers and everyone in, in the line. So I guess it's, it's a, a matter of how, how I said earlier, that emotional intelligence, I guess, I guess it's very important. I guess there's a lot of people that are lacking that professional intelligence that are not able to make a distinction of this is for the work and this is for, like, for myself or for my colleagues. Don't understand, uh, at least the way that I was brought up, or working on a place and not be able to, to some extent, share some amenities with the people that I work with or even the people that are not directly in my department or however you want to structure a company. Like right. I, be, I believe in open conversation because not only I believe that people to some extent are work on a more fluid manner when they're able to be themselves that when they need to be this robot or this cog in, in the machine doesn't have any purpose that just to move the, the machinery forward and leaving all humanity behind. And I really think that it's not the same you dealing with someone that had a bad day and you asking them to do go above and beyond when they're having a rough day versus when they're in a good mood. The people that take their job too seriously, I think are those that lack that empathy or are able to have that peer view of right. the happenings or even the extent of the things that they do or recognizing that not only they are replaceable by someone with either more experience or someone that is newer, that is coming fresh and maybe asking for less money for what they're doing their job, or they really have the notion of believing that the amount of work that you do is directly tied to how you progress in a company. And not saying that the hustle culture doesn't exist, there's still some extent of that. I myself, to some extent, I've been I've been a hustler most of my life. Like, no, I not only done what I've been assigned to do, I try to go above and beyond most of the time. Yeah. But definitely in recent years, it's like gone to the extent of me getting into that realization as you are just talking now. Like, maybe not taking my job too serious. Right. Yeah. And, I, you know, that's, that's kind of where my line of thought was when I posed that question to you was that was pretty much exactly what, what you had just mentioned right there. So, you know, maybe saying, you know, not taking your job seriously is probably bad terminology. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, it, it's just, it's one of those things to me. It's, uh, I guess in my experience, I've, I've, I've seen so many people dedicate so much of their time and their energy and their personal time to doing stuff for work and either not get rewarded for it or, ultimately get laid off or fired or whatever downsize you know etc you know for for you know no, no reason and, and and it's like okay well all that time all that energy you spent was for you know it, it wasn't for nothing but you know it was good for for you know maybe personally um but you really didn't get anything out of it you you, you got your reward was quite possibly could potentially have been getting let go and now having to try to find another job, which, which is, uh, you know, never a fun thing. What do you think, and, and, and kind of a twist in the logic a bit, what do you think that people don't take their job serious enough? What do you think of those people? Well, you see, and, 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 and now, now it gets to be, you know, now I can swing my opinion back to a little bit the other way because because probably because of the way I worded that question uh, as far as taking it seriously. And, and you know, for me, I, I, I would put myself into a, the category of not taking my job seriously, but uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily accurate. You know, I, I, I take, I do what I do. I take what I do seriously and I want it to be done correctly. And I take pride in my work. What I don't understand, you know, is the people who, you know, obsess over it. So, but what you don't want is somebody that is in a quite literal term not taking their job seriously and because then that could lead to basically the scenario that you painted earlier with the with the problem that could lead to mistakes that could lead to you know bad uh, performance and and uh, honestly 
it could lead to uh, you know a bad situation with your with your coworkers. I, you know, to, to me, one of my biggest things is is I don't want to. I, I don't want to be the type of person that's not pulling my weight. You know, I, I always want to be the, you know, I, I, and I also don't feel like I should be doing something or I'm, I'm below doing that. I should, you know, oh, that this task should be for this guy because I'm too experienced to do that. Ta- now, everybody's on the same team. We should all. That, that's not my in. job. Yeah, that's exactly. Well, I mean, there's definitely instances instances where you could potentially say that's not my job, you know, depending on how the things are situated. But when you're on the same team, and, and in my opinion, that team is responsible for these tasks, nobody on that team should be below those tasks. So when you get to, when you get somebody that starts to think that way, that can be detrimental to the, you know, the, the, the team environment. It could be detrimental to the, obviously to the company and, and, and uh to you know performance and stuff as well uh so yeah i think i think my if i was going to ask you the question again i probably would have worded it a little bit differently but uh you know that's kind of what just came to my mind and it started to hit me when i was sitting in a meeting not too long ago and just kind of watching people around the, the meeting and their their input and how dedicated some of these people were you know, just just like I want to own these tasks, and I need we need our department to have all you know all these tasks, and we need to be able to do this and this and this. I want to do this, and it's like that, that's 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 great, but man, there's more. There's more to life than that. You know, to me, it's like you want to dedicate your entire time to that your personal time to doing this stuff. To me, is crazy. Um, why? You know, why don't you want to spend more time with your family and your friends and doing things that you enjoy and, and whatnot? You know, again, and you it, should... it can be done. And, and that's a very fine line between you having someone that is a good leader and a, someone that is able to manage their resources accordingly, because a boss will just do that that you describe like, hey, we need to do this. And uh, the, the typical adage like, oh, the captain is going to say, we we need to take over that hill while they're at war. And obviously, while he's on the bunker, he's ordering all the soldiers to go and fight and get themselves killed while he's back on the bunker very safe. The, right. the, the fact same for uh, bosses in some company that we need to take over that hill. We need to do all those tasks. But there's the one just in the back, you know, and not really giving any path or plan or allocating resources in accordance to the livelihood of each of their first people that re- report to them. And th- I guess that the people that are bad leaders because they're not able to create that sense of purpose, ownership, and accountability in their resources that they feel like, I know this person uh, is going to give me free time when I ask them to, or it's going to be lenient if I'm not able to get uh, to a certain date, he's able to push back days or able to accommodate my needs to my work. And when you got someone like that, you naturally are going to gravitate toward actually being able to do not only the job that you need to do for the company, but do it in a so that it's uh, agreeable to you and the company, because you know that someone's going to have your back when someone it's not going to have your back and it's only expecting everything from you, but uh, like with the sacrifice of your personal life is, is what I meant to say. Th- yeah, that, exactly. That definitely is uh, it, it, it's not a healthy relationship, but to be quite honest with you, going in the other direction, would you prefer to work with someone that doesn't care at all? Like uh, you found, find out like two weeks before... <laughs> before the deadline hey oh guys uh you know we we need to get this done and uh, do it whenever you can uh, oh, okay is there any deadline no I, I don't know the deadline and then you find out hey we need to get this done before uh before friday but uh what was the deadline oh yeah they told me it was like two three months ago that it was this friday but wait wh- why didn't you tell me and you know there's a lot of uh, nuances of examples of people not taking their job too serious and i guess it goes I guess too much in the other direction, like people. Yeah, that would be too much in the other direction. People not taking into account, for example, you're working with contracts, people not able to sit down and accordingly interpret the stipulations of the contract that they're reading 
and the laws of, say, the state that they're working on, how how do you expect someone to be taken seriously when they don't sit down and take into account that there are laws that they shouldn't forego and they should be taken into consideration? And maybe you could say out of the gate, oh, but that's maybe not life-threatening, but they didn't take their jobs too ser seriously enough to not only lo know the local law or for whatever the company they were working in, uh, say that you're working, well, yeah, on a law firm and maybe some case or have some precedent that varies from state to state and you move from another state and you're assuming that it's the same law as the other one and you didn't do your due diligence to actually uh, show up and read and get yourself up to speed and you could say, well, he didn't take it too seriously because he assumed that it's going to be the same as the other state that he came from. Yeah, yeah, no, no, a hundred percent, and you know that that ain't your other example as far as like the deadline and stuff like that. That could cross a little bit. There's a little bit of a blurry line as far as so, you know somebody not taking their job seriously versus just poor management as well. So yeah, go ahead. That's what I wanted to break it down as far as the statement because there's a lot of things that maybe can be unpacked from your initial statement as yeah. far as yeah, not not not. I understand where you're coming from because I know you. <laughs> Obviously, we, we talk well, about regular basis, but I mean, to, to, but, but to the under, yeah, for, for for the understanding of other people listening, like what what do they mean taking it seriously? Right, it definitely. I don't know. No, no, no worries. I, I mean, I, I de definitely think that I, I, I yeah, it could be misconstrued into me, you know, saying that. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it was worded poorly because you know, I, I it's not that I don't take it seriously. I do, but what made me phrase it that way was an experience that I had as far as being on vacation where I did not, I was actually not even in the country. Um, I was out, I was actually on a cruise ship. I come back from my vacation to find out that, you know, the powers that be were trying to get a hold of me while I was on vacation to, because of some, you know, problem that they had. And the reason I, I think I worded it that way was because I found it comical to me that they thought I was going to actually bring my work stuff with me on vacation, mm. you know, because, because it was like, okay, you really thought I was going to bring my work laptop and my work phone with me on, on when I'm going out of the country while, on a cruise so that, you know, you, what, just in case something happened, I'm going to break out my laptop on, on the cruise Wi-Fi to try to try to fix a problem. I'm not the only one that works at the company. You know, I'm not the only IT person. So it's like, come on. that that's more, I think that's kind of where my mind kind of went to, you know, taking this stuff seriously. That, because I, I found that comical. Like, yeah, you really thought I was going to bring my stuff with me? There, there's a lack of understanding, foresight. I, I don't even know what to call it that people really don't get or don't want to get because, I mean, you're human too. You go on vacation as well. Why wouldn't you uh, consider the free time of someone that is just that, their free time to be able to be with themselves? That sure. Otherwise, you only get two, two days a week and maybe less depending on the sort of work that you have. For, well, that's a whole other conversation, yeah. For you be able to not only do the things that you need to do when you're at, you cannot do while you're at work, but also to rest. Um, the the human mind can only go so far as being engaged on a task, and uh, I, I really I gotta bring it to a conversation because I guess it's a, a, a very hot topic. The whole mindset of Elon Musk asking the the staff at Twitter working a minimum of eighty hours a week, like yeah, see that's ridiculous. Like, like what the hell, man? Like I guess it, I, I and I let me put it this way. I think I understand when he's coming from because. If by all accounts, if the by what the information that we know, he used to have like a small shop kind of a deal, and he hustled uh, long days and nights to get where he is now. I can understand that, and I guess that's what he sees as the ground basis of success, by you burning yourself up to be able to get to that position. But the matter of fact is that not everyone can be the CEO of a company. You know, everyone can be director at the same time. Like you can hustle. You can work hard. There's nothing wrong with that. But you cannot expect everyone to hustle as hard as you did and 
have your position because not everyone can be CEO at the same time or everyone can be, you know, you know what I'm getting at? I, I know exactly what you're getting at. Be, be, and, and, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. arguments to be said whether he actually did hustle or not, but that's besides the point, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't expect everybody to have the same work ethic, work ethic as you do, um, especially if your work ethic is that extreme. Uh, especially when, you, and you also have to take into consideration that let's say his work, and, and I'll, I'll take him off the table because uh, I don't really like the guy, but let's just say someone's work ethic is up to that standard of working 80 hours a week for their for a company that they own. That's different than asking the, that, the, uh, that, that person asking their employees to put in that same amount of time for a company that they don't own. I can understand it from a perspective of busting your ass and, and going, you know, like you said, hustling like crazy to try to, you know, benefit yourself and benefit your own company. But to have, have a company ask its employees to do that is asinine, in my opinion, because they're not getting anything back from that company. They're just getting a paycheck. The more I bust my ass for the company, the more the company makes money. That doesn't affect my paycheck. That affects the CEO's paycheck and the board member's paycheck. It doesn't affect mine. You know, that that's kind of where, you know, out of touchness, it's not a word, but I'm going to use it anyways, comes into play. You know I, what I mean? I know for a matter of fact, there's uh, schools of thought, if you want to call it that. I may not be able to coin the terms by their proper uh, definition of their stated, but I obviously being exposed to other people way of thinking and there's a, 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 a trend that has been going for a while that people think uh, as a matter of fact that true work and you be able to put everything investing at everything into just work not not leisure that is how societies advance and evolve there's nothing to be had out of leisure Unfortunately, there are a lot of people in positions of power that have that thought process of we, we get nothing out of leisure, so everyone must work. Uh, so we advance society as if society was like the the utmost uh, value for, for everyone. And this, uh, I guess you could say, like an organism, like each individual self contributing to the, to the whole. And I'm not able to coin the term, but it, it's that sort of a thought process uh, that some people have that, oh, yeah, you, you, you only live to work. Like, you, you, you value as an individual is the value that you could put back into the, the system. Otherwise, you're, you're not valuable. And they might, right. not, I mean, they might not say it directly, but, oh, your performance... It's not on par this quarter. Like, what are you going to do this performance for, for this review? Or uh, how do you expect to in increase your performance? Are you always going to be improving your performance? Uh, there's no such thing as preserving your performance. If you stay in line or just okay performance, uh, I don't know. The, we we got to look for someone else, you know? Yeah, it's the, that cutthroat nature. Yeah, and, and I guess you could say as well is part of capitalism. <laughs> It's definitely capital, it is. capitalism has, yeah, has brought us is. has brought us to this point, both in the good and the bad. You gotta say that we've been able to achieve a lot of things thanks to it, but also sure. you gotta see all the impact that it had on people being richer and richer that are in the very small echelon of individuals, given the in correlation to the rest of the population, and yeah. other people having to work more and more and not be able to afford the basic needs for their day-to-day. Yeah. -day. Like, people live from check to check looking at their account and, well, I cannot sneeze because otherwise uh, I will have to go to a doctor and let's not talk about the healthcare system. That's right, another, right, right, that, right. That, that, that's a lot of ramification to that conversation, I guess. But I Yeah, that can go down a whole different kind of rabbit hole. But, um, my, but my point being that you thinking that oh there are people that are too serious with their job like let, let, let's use keep using that term so we're in agreement uh, <laughs> as, as far as the conversation because yeah no no I, I was the one to ask the question so yeah, yeah. I, I gotta i gotta own it so is there people taking that taking it too seriously may come from a ramification of mindsets structures e economics that are in play right now you might say how how do we even deal with that and a funny, a funny thought process would be how 
do I make it so that I'm eff as efficient, but also not not being in a position that the company is gonna feel that it needs to replace me? Like it, it, it's gonna go from from the top, or you not believing in how companies run out of themselves? Then that would be another issue. Like, yeah, no, no doubt. Either change the paradigm of how we base our work environment that I guess is in a bit of a turn right now. Like, uh, I don't know if you heard quite recently, I believe this this week as we were, we're talking right now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there was a tournament for Smash Brothers that was... Uh, you mean the game that's not a fighting game? The game that is a fighting game. <laughs> 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 that I don't know what, you, what else you would call it if not a fighting game. The party game? It, it's a fighting game. <laughs> Anyway, I know, I just like pushing your buttons. <laughs> the, uh, uh, let's leave that for another conversation. I guess, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have an episode on that one, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I were to take you too seriously on that, obviously we wouldn't be able to, to have a conversation. <laughs> this, is, this is true. But I, 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 I do have some hot takes, you know, every once in a while. So, <laughs> so going back, like, the, the Smash uh, tournament that was happening yeah. uh, mm -hmm. got suspended because apparently Nintendo retracted their license and the people that were hosting the tournament, I believe it was Panda Gaming, like, suspended the tournament. There was, like, a price of... Uh, twenty five thousand dollars or some something in the such. Okay. It turned out that after that, people started leaving the company because they were dissatisfied how the company was handling the whole situation. And Nintendo, you're talking about? No, the one that was the the, uh, the, pa the uh, Panda Gaming. The the host of the the, oh, the tournament. Of oh, the tournament, yes. Gotcha. Okay. And that always tells you that employees are having like a new uh, empowerment. That if they feel that they don't like the way the company is dealing with things, they feel more empowered to just leave. I don't know about you, but that that felt like a no no uh, some time ago, or at least from from where I come from. Like you just telling a company to to go for a fry, you know, <laughs> like it, yeah. it, it wasn't that common. Now they do hear news like that. The same with Twitter uh, when they started making their statement, a lot of people were just up and leaving because they were not satisfied with not only the massive layoff, but the the state of the company was turning to, I guess it's a developing story as we're talking, uh, it's turning to be right now, and they just up and left. Yeah, I, I think you are start, starting to see a little bit of a paradigm shift uh, from employees trying to get a little bit of that power back uh, from the companies who are uh, maybe taking advantage of uh, you know people at, at uh, a lot of times. You know, I, I know you mentioned 80 hour work weeks with, uh, uh, you know, that stuff at Twitter and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I, I'm in the I'm on the boat that 40 hours is too much, um, you know, for, for a normal for, for, you know, normal everyday uh, uh, type person. Um, you know, who came up with this 40 hours a week? Who came up with why it's uh, five days a week and only two days off uh, kind of deal? You know, it, it, everything seems to be skewed towards the business. Um, as far as, you know, to the point of there's no balance, you know, you, the, the companies always like to talk about work-life balance, but in the general, you know, just to, if you just take a look at the general work schedule, there is no work-life balance. It's, it's, it's far from balanced. If you're talking about 40 hours a week, you're talking about five days out of, out of, the, out of a seven-day week um, that you're spending, you know, working eight, eight hours a day, five days a week. You know, by the time you're done with your, your with your work, you have you know little personal time to get you know your stuff done. Um, you know, just just your normal you know everyday activities that need to get done. As and then that's not even to mention that stuff that might bring you some enjoyment. You know, hobbies and family and friends and, and things of that nature. You know, you work, you get off of work on Friday night. You're done. You know, you you basically you wake up, you have Saturday, and then Sunday you're already turning around looking at work on the next month on um, monday again so to me it's just it's it's just like too much i, I just don't i, I really think to, that <coughs> life should be re, as revolved around you know uh, a job as as it is uh un, you know unfortunately that's just the way it is you know but maybe in, in time i don't know if uh we'll be alive to see that transition if there will be a transition uh to maybe something a little bit more balancing but uh you know hopefully in time 
it, the transition would be into machines doing everyone's job and a lot of people not being able to get a, a, a job because they're being replaced by a machine. That's what, how I see things going forward. And you, the actual jobs are going to be people knowing how to repair the machines that do the work for right, everyone else. Right, right. That's been talked about for such a long time now, and you know, not, not to say that it's 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 not accurate, but uh, you know, I think it's just I think I think a lot of people expected it to already start happening, and it and I mean it has, but it hasn't, right? To so, to, to some extent, uh, to some extent, the, yeah. The, the machines uh, take your orders in uh, fast food chains, say McDonald's and it. all those, and you don't interact with someone. The my, the it's my favorite. Are you use it? My favorite is not interacting with somebody. Uh, that, that, there you go. Uh, <laughs> the the self checkout at supermarkets. Uh, you just pay for it or in Walmart. You just check out yourself. There's no yeah. cashier. There, there's like five or six of those machines, and just one person is taking care of those machines at the same time. So, I don't, instead of having the the wage of six cashiers, you're only paying one person. Uh, yeah. Not to say all the other. Well, we work at a <clears throat> we work at a factory, <laughs> and <laughs> there were machines that were, or at least, <laughs> well, that's a, that, that, that's a mixed line because there were machines that were already doing some automated job that usually might have taken more people to do so. But uh, yes. I, I guess the other robots <laughs> that that you guys had there in the factory, well, again, not saying any names, but the the robots that were carrying like a glass panel to one place to the other, like. I guess you pay half a million dollars for that robot doing that job versus having two people carry that. Yeah. I guess there's I, only so much that you can, I guess, replace or innovate with a, with a machine versus someone doing the job. I guess things are might be more sophisticated or automation, like obviously the the, the packing companies or yes. or such. Like obviously there's a lot of lines that it's just a machine doing the 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 bottling of a, of a Coca-Cola or whatever, you know, no, it's not someone. Yeah, automation, things like that, and something repetitive over and over and over again makes makes perfect sense, you know, whereas the, the a robot doesn't have to take breaks. It can continue to do that same exact job over and over again, so it's really not that big of a deal. Um, but, yeah, I think something that that would need to take into consideration the – you know the thought process of a human being you know involved uh it's you know taking uh you know the maybe the the surroundings of the people you know, whatnot into consideration um you know that that there, there's something to be said for that as well you know like your example of moving a piece of glass from one one area to another area maybe in a factory situation yeah you could have a like i said a half million dollar robot do that for you but I, uh, to me it's like well how often is this done is this done every hour on the hour and then okay maybe now you want to take a look at developing some sort of automation for it if it's if it's if it's not done that consistently to me it makes probably more sense to have somebody uh have actual people moving that they can take into consideration other things that are going on at the time where that a robot might not be aware of or care about obviously and, uh you know making sure there's extra precautions or or, or or whatever you know just in that kind of example so will it I mean, obviously, the robots are getting more sophisticated as, as time moves on, and they, they can start to take into consideration some of these other factors. Uh, but you know, there's still, you know, there's still that, uh, you know, that human element that 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 is going to need to be involved at least uh, up until they get to the point of uh, the robots taking over, like in uh, Terminator, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, not that much. Uh, well, there. It was Stephen Hawking, I believe, that had a, a distinct fear and a warning towards humanity and, and not allowing AI to develop too much, if I'm not mistaken, because of the potential of being able to process things so fast. And if we were to develop like a conscience, I guess that's a, a common fear or something yeah. that is stipulated, like a fear that is running among people. I, I guess you heard of that. I guess it's metaphorical, but it's an institution that is uh, comprised of a lot of physicists. Dang, what's the name of the association? The the one that says how many minutes to to midnight the the doom clock is. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the one that I'm talking about. I think so. Yeah, I don't know the name, but I know I've heard of it. I'm pretty sure I've heard of it. Yeah. So so that's the there's a a, a league of people that are usually. Uh, determining how far to midnight, mid midnight meaning the, the extinction of the human race or of, of catastrophic nature going on. 
And I guess the closer has been like 100 seconds to midnight, and that being due to factors such as uh, uh, climate change, uh, nuclear sure. weapons, uh, relationship between uh, countries, wars, the, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, recently was considered that very same scenario of uh, AI taking over. Right. Like, Im imagine for a moment, right now, like you sitting now, what things do you own that are not managed by a computer? Yeah, not a whole lot, right? I mean, it, 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 cars are all computerized now. Um, you know, it, it, hell, hell, TVs are too. So, yeah, pretty much everything. Uh, even my damn toothbrush is Bluetooth. Yeah, so, so imagine... Uh, Obviously, it goes a bit onto the sci-fi fear. Some people will not believe it as far as obviously being too far-fetched. I felt kind of in between, like, man, this sounds too way too out there, but the mental exercise of the potential that it may have, I think it's still discussed to this day. I don't know the company. Was it Facebook? I don't remember which company was it, that they have, like, two AI talking to each other and they started... <laughs> exchanging information so fast that they develop their own language in a matter of minutes. Yeah, I heard about that. I don't remember who it was, but I, yeah, I, I, I remember reading about that. And they needed to terminate the, the exercise because they, they feared that what they yeah. were doing because they weren't, I guess the fear of man is not being in control. And, well, sure, yeah. And that, I guess, can extend to the, the topic that we presented originally. I guess people fearing they not be in control of their lives or their livelihoods or a slew of other teens, I guess is what would motivate people to maybe doing the things that they do, like the fear, like not being able to qualm with the things that you have control over or you have are exposed to. If I don't control it, I don't need it or I, I fear it. So either I get rid of it or, well, just that, I control it. So... I guess people that are in the position of too demanding on their jobs either have the feel, fear that they cannot trust their employees if they don't control them by leaving, giving them the leeway of them being their own persons and not only doing their job for a living, but with a satisfaction of what they're doing. And there's a lot of that can go into that uh, conversation as far as dissecting why things are the way that they are. But yeah. If you had the option, would you work with someone that, like we previously say, take their job too serious or someone that doesn't? Neither. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's fun, obviously, when you have the option to, to choose by a third option, but there, there was no third option. There were two, and you had to choose. <laughs> I guess the question is, is it not taking their job seriously as far as my mindset or literally i'm going i'm going not taking, i'm going, <laughs> not taking I'm, I'm, go, I'm, going I'm going by your mindset so, so we, we're in agreement if it, if it was my mindset if they had the same mindset as me then i would take the person that doesn't take their job seriously okay and why would that be um because i i i don't want to be the uh the type of person that that is going to get pushed or i don't want to say overshadowed but I don't. I don't. Don't like to work with the with somebody who has. They do nothing but work. I don't find any enjoyment in that. I find it hard to. You know, kind of. I. 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 I actually find it hard to communicate with them as far as you know, just working with them and and lining up our thought processes. So obviously, you're always going to, or you, not always, but a lot. Of, most of the time, you're going to probably pick somebody that has a similar mindset of you to work with and that can go for you know pretty much anything but uh yeah i i i i, I want to the person that doesn't take their job as too seriously is going to at least be able to value your personal time empathize empath, empathize with you as far as um you know things that are going on outside of the job um versus somebody that is taking it very seriously and would much rather ignore everything outside of their job. Okay. Obviously, to make to make the clear, is by your mindset. Obviously, not by I guess the the coining the term because if we were to do it that way, I guess it would be the other way around. Don't you think? Yeah, it, it, exactly. It would definitely be the other way around because I don't want to work with somebody who's not taking their job or. or <laughs> I don't want to. I just said I want. Yeah. I just, I yeah. 
<laughs> I don't want to work with somebody who's not taking their job seriously. Uh, but then I said, I want to work with somebody who's not taking their job seriously. Yeah, that 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 was the phrasing. So uh, I, somebody who doesn't care about their ah, shit. That's 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 not even a good way to put it either. Um, I mean, would you? Use, yeah, it's tough. If you were to coin the term outside of the the mindset that you have now, I guess to a broader audience or well uh, you, you know that, that's demo, a, demo, that's, demographic. that's a that's a decent transition because before we wrapped everything up i did want to talk a little bit uh, uh you know briefly about the term quiet quitting and that's become very popular term in in the recent i i, I want to say months because that's when i really started Uh, to pick up on it, but I think it's, I don't is know, it, has it been going on for month, for it, years? It's been going for a, a year or two, yeah. Yeah, so it's been going on for a lot longer, and it <sighs> basically kind of describes, see, to me, quiet quitting is more lines up with my mentality of what the normal person should be doing. And that is, they're fulfilling their, you know, all their responsibilities while they're at work, but they don't necessarily need to be going Uh, above and beyond staying late, showing up early, you know, going to, uh, you know, all this stuff. I mean, to, to, to me, and, and I don't, I just don't understand why it's being talked about as such a negative connotation uh, when it's literally describing somebody who's doing their job, you know, just because somebody is doing their job and they're not working 80 hours a week, that makes them a bad worker. Mm, I don't think so. I believe that I, I, we, we br touched upon that briefly a, a podcast or two ago as far as I guess the, the burnout that people are feeling and there's multiple types of uh, burnout right now because a generational factor definitely is, uh, is in influence right now by the how they call it the Gen C <laughs> or the millennials or uh, everything yeah right? I can't keep up with all of them yeah I believe the, the Gen C's is what has been stipulated to have the least amount of tools to be able to deal with pressure, stress, and other things that are not directly tied with technology. Uh, because they grew more so than millennials. They really grew in the thick of it instead of the, uh, the start of it. Uh, social media being a thing and all, the, all these other like TikToks and you name it. Yeah. And they bring that to their work environments uh, as far as not having the tools and the people that have the tools, i.e. people from a previous generation or obviously being more seasoned in the workforce, I guess get burned out having to not only deal with their job, but being dealing to work with colleagues, co-workers or other people that have a generational mindset that is different to theirs and you having to cater to those needs and uh, it's not putting a blame in a generation it's more so how things are and people realizing that they just need to do their job for the sake of doing their job and that's it it's something that generationally is doesn't going on par with the companies that are not founded in this era day and age or have changed their way to adopt these new people going to the workforce and i believe that they being able to recognize at, at least that that they're just doing their job for for that their job or otherwise they will quit is brave mm -hmm. but also lacks i guess the you need to have some degree of grit and be able to hustle I, I I still I guess I'm from that generation still <laughs> that there there's some merit to that, but also understanding that you are not gonna quit at the first sign of uh, struggle or there's a tense situation or I'm too stressed out I cannot deal with this I'm gone. Obviously you need to deal with some degree of stress. You need to deal with problem solving to some extent. Obviously when it goes to the extent of being too much, you you gotta know when to call it quits. And being seen in the negative tone, like the quiet quitting, I, I guess it's a mixture uh, nowadays of a generation bringing back to the table and how we previous generations are dealing with that ourselves and yep. how that's being interpreted as something negative instead of something that should be recognized as as a whole that it, we're, sh we're, we're, sh we're changing as a culture as a society as a whole civilization everything is changing like it is 
you cannot expect things to remain the same all the time because uh, you're, you're going to stagnate. There's, if there's no change, you stagnate. And there's I, I, now I say there's no evolution or, or improvement of society or, or us as a species or uh, we living together with, by one another. Yeah, you know, it's... It's definitely interesting. You know, there's some examples that I can think of as far as like the cool, quiet quitting thing that uh, that that bothers me. As far as uh, you know, a lot if the co if companies look down on somebody who's not, you know, going the extra mile, uh, whatnot. But uh, how come if I finish my task early, I, I can't, uh, you know, uh, leave early? You know, that's 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 always a no-no, right? So you're always expected to work late when needed. But you're never uh, allowed to or expected to leave early. Uh, leave early when you're either not needed or your tasks are finished early. So I think that plays a part because then people start to look at, well, why should I bust my ass, you know, above and beyond when I'm not getting anything for it? But I I also think that one of the main things that I don't want to say introduce quiet quitting, but I think it's become more uh, prominent now is the advent of like basically our cell phones uh, and basically having work at a, you know, your work email literally just a touch away in your pocket. Uh, you know, beforehand, you know, back way back when, back in the day, right? Um, <laughs> You had to either VPN in to check your work email or, you know, obviously even before that there, you know, you, you, you had no accessibility while you're outside of the office. But now, you know, they give you these work phones at, uh, at your job and it's almost become like expected to like if you get an email, at, you know, seven o'clock at night and, you know, you it's almost like, well, how come you didn't you didn't answer me at eight o'clock last night? How come you waited until eight a.m. to answer me? Kind of kind of thing. It's like, what? You think I'm just sitting here looking at my work email all the time? Some people do that. And some people think that you should be doing that, and you shouldn't be doing. That. No, you you shouldn't. Uh, like people that expect you to to be working uh, around the clock, even when you're off work, uh, it, it's really ridiculous. Unless that that that's the statement that I really hate when you're a salary employee like oh you're paid for uh, working off hours like that's not being taken you're into paid for 40 hours if you yeah. look at it you're paid for 40 hours a week uh, you're not paid for 80 for 80 and obviously <laughs> that would be extra work and that you're using that as a blanket statement to, to not having to pay for the extra work that i do off hours either the model of uh, paying by hour already is defunct like really doesn't work or if you really expect people to work around the clock, well, if someone's going to work, uh, you have to pay them when they, they clock into work. Like, instead of you working uh, eight hours, you work, say, you complete your task in three hours, then you get paid for those three hours. The rest of the day, well, you don't get paid because uh, you're not working. Like, right. this, uh, like how, how do you get to the point that I in no way, let me make that clear, I'm going to defend too hard a company, uh, especially after <laughs> being on the side of getting burned by giving my all and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Versus how do you remunerate your employees? But realistically, if you were to say, I guess that will go back to the example that I pre presented previously. Like you, you worked only three hours, you complete your task in three hours, but you need the pay from eight to be able to make a living. So then would you just add fluff to your work to be able to fill those other five hours so you get paid for eight instead of three? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then if you put it from the side of the company, say that you were the one that own a company or you have your own business, you want to pay people for their time or the time that they're not working for you? I, yeah. You know, I, I really think it could be almost as simple as giving some leeway, you know, for people stop, stop making people or stop looking down on people who don't do the whole 80 hour work week stuff. And, <coughs> you know, make sure that, you know, it's one thing if you're, if you're not getting your job done during the time period, but don't look down on somebody who's, who's, um, not working these, you know, crazy hours. Um, and, and, and then don't, look down on people who take time off 
and don't disrespect people's time off uh, by basically trying to get a hold of them. Um, you know, when 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 they're when they're not at work, and, you know, it's one thing if you have a, a specific rotation and you're expected to work uh, during those those, those uh, rotational periods, uh, and and you know that is a whole another argument in it of itself because you're technically not getting paid for those for the for the way most of these companies work. Basically, stop disrespecting or not stop. Don't disrespect people's personal time. I, I you know I think it could be. Just, just that, how would quite possibly help quite a bit. Might take a whole lot of time. <laughs> it will. Or, it will. Or, or something. Or something really like the people that are in power. All of those, I guess, changing when I say power, the people that control the companies that we rely on nowadays, and that's expecting, I guess, a whole bunch uh, out of people that obviously make their living out of the expense of other people leaving their all so it, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough yeah it will be but i think i think like you had said before that there were in a transitional period um yep. where people are now starting to embrace some of the thought processes that i've you know that that i've been having more recently uh and again i've been on both sides i've been that person who worked 80 100 hour work weeks And, you know, now I've become that person who I will do the absolute best I can during the time I'm supposed to be there. But don't make me or don't ask me to go and do, you know, 80, 100 hour weeks again. I'm not going to do that. Does that necessarily mean that I'm not going to put in extra time? No, of course not. I, I understand, especially in my field that there's going to be times that I'm going to have to do off hours work or I might be on a, a page rotation or, or whatever the case may be. Don't expect me to be in lockstep with every single thing that's happening at a, at the company 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not happening. Uh, I'm with you there, man. Uh, precisely what I've been dealing with the my re recent rut, if you want to call it that. <laughs> I'll be able to, to find something meaningful that is for myself that I being able to perform and not necessarily goes in line with, man, uh, I need to work all this time, all these hours for someone else yep. uh, with, yep. with no remuneration or really appreciation for that because at the end of the day, we, we, you, you're just another cog in a machine that is easily, re easily replaceable. 100% correct. 100% correct because if, if you're not doing exactly what they want you to do, they will find somebody that will. On that note, do you have anything else? That's all I got today. I, again, it was a poorly worded question, but it was a cool topic to <laughs> no, talk about. <laughs> well, obviously, it, 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 not not so much that it was poorly. Sorry, if it, I, well, no. So, so, sorry if I came out too strong. It's just that I wanted to make sure that, uh, like, you just coined the the what I was trying to get at because people have different ways to refer to things. Obviously, my mindset in a, some sense is different than yours. Yeah, and, and maybe with the mindset that you're uh, presenting the point, maybe people are think serious. Then serious for someone. What do you mean by serious? Kind of a deal. Yeah, a hundred percent correct. And and yeah, and that's just kind of like where uh, again, my the way my mind works sometimes is just boom. I I might go to like an extreme, you know, scenario or an extreme idea. But it's it's in in my mind, it's not. But it might sound like it is. You know, you know, case in point with the. With the you know taking taking their job seriously, I didn't I didn't mean it, but I meant it. You know what I mean? I, I, uh, I, I know you. I know you. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Yeah. But for other people listening, but I think what, what my what I expressed in my you know what I said just just um, a few minutes ago that was my line of thought. Uh, just I have trouble conveying that question, but I wanted to ask you that question because I know. I know you as well, and I know you'd be able to pull me back into a little bit of a different direction or open up some different aspects to make me think about things that maybe I didn't quite think of uh, beforehand. So I, 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 I quite enjoyed that conversation. And that's what we do here, people. This has been Alan. I'm my friend Kevin. Have a good one. Take care.